this is a video on how to modify a Polaroid Spectra camera to work with 600 or iType film. So first off, you want to check compatibility with your camera. Fun f this is an example of a camera that won't fit without modifications. As you can see, this plastic piece right here, it's currently flush with the springs and it extends past the rollers. That is too long and it will interfere with the cartridge when you put it inside. So if you want to use these cameras, you have to get some special pliers to cut these away to be behind the rollers. You could take these out by putting your thumb here on the tab, push outwards, and it should pop off the hinge. And this one you twist downwards, and there you go. Now then you could cut these. For the back, you could do it in reverse. And make sure this hooks onto the latch first. This is a bit difficult looking. Fortunately, the battery's dead in this one. And here's a camera that does work. It's already open. As you can see, the support that's behind the rollers, and no modifications are needed. This one has some e-tape on the rollers and the springs are bent because this is modified and tested. You put tape on it to help get the spread better. Then you would get your cartridge, your prepared cartridge. So usually these would come with a plastic tab like this that covers the front. You flip this down and rip it off, fairly easy. The difficult part is this plastic piece right here that goes inside. You want to rip that off because this will prevent the film from projecting. I would recommend doing that in the dark to try not get any light leaks. As you can see, you can see the film, which means light could probably get in there. So then next is you want to bend your pins or the, yeah, the contacts inside like that. Focus. Come on. There you go. Yeah. So let me show you how it's done. Usually the contacts are felt like that and you just put the cartridge inside. It fits, but it won't hit the battery. So you're going to back the batteries like that. So what you're going to do is bend it to the left, like lift it, get your fingers like that, put it in between your fingers, lift it up, and move it to the left. This one's already bent, so it has a tendency to move to the left. And after you got it there, you have to bend it back in those square grids. You just got to, there you go. And that will provide tension and also manage to reach the contacts back here. So then once that's done, you would slide this all the way to the left and just push it in. And there you go. It's in. And to make sure it's actually in, move it side to side. It was like that, it's solid. And then you could close the door and it's ready. Some more specifics. Um, if you're gonna modify camera to work some other system, you see that like contact right there, that brown contact? That's actually a speed selector switch. It has to be pushed in in order to correctly identify the film. To do that, you would get a piece of straw like this. You'd cut it and try to shove it in there. If you want to look for more details, you look into the service manual that's found online. There's also another switch, if I could focus. Yep. Right there. That's for the film counter, or the, yeah, the shot counter. That has to be pushed in by the edge of the cartridge. If it's not pressed all the way in, the camera will keep on spitting film out, which is no good. So then once that's done, but yeah, initially it's gonna be, it's gonna feel tough to put the, the film in there, but once it's in there, it's in there. And then hopefully this will work. You just close it. Oh yeah, sorry. This the film cartridge is already open, and this is already broken. This is sometimes to be injection problems like this. Uh,
Finally, it works. The battery in this, by the way, is it's pretty dead. It has went through about four to five packs of film already. As you can see, it's pretty beat up. I have two of them, but <laughs> they're both dead. All right. So I'd say these would last about four to five packs. Supposed to be six volts. They are pretty dead. But hey, these batteries are enough to have enough current for power to push these packs through, even when they're brand new. Alright, on to how to load I type. There's my other type of camera. This one has a glass lens, and the pictures it picked are pretty sharp. Oh yeah, there's also some tape covering the viewfinder because this is not wide film, this is narrow film. And to get the spacing right, just go to a monitor, open a picture of a, like a 600 film, and look through the viewfinder, and keep adjusting the tape till the this side, the viewfinder, matches perfectly with the ratio of a 600 film. Alright, now to loading iType film. The rollers here, they have been modified with two layers of or two layers of e-tape on each roller so that the film develops more evenly. I still haven't figured out a way to um, perfectly do it, but yeah. For i-type film, what you want to do is uh, your 600 type film. There's a how-to page under Polaroid support where in order to extract the film or recycle them, there's an article on how to recycle these cartridges, but usually that's there. What you do is push down. And then push out like that. This would pop out, and then you put that up. And then you got your batteries here. Usually, I would tape the ends to give them a bit of more durability, but it depends on what you like. So once that's away, you get your eye type film. As you can see, no holes, just eye type. So then make sure for eye type, if you do the 600 type where you bend it to the left, it will not fit. The battery pack. So what you want to do, get your i-type film. After you've done it in the dark, you would shove it in there. Also, from that modification earlier, there's that straw that makes it so that it lowers the exposure or make it faster by like one or two thirds of a stop. So you need your battery pack and then make sure the contacts facing down. And simply, you just slide it in, slide it down the middle. You could use your thumbs or fingers to offset it. And then you make sure this edge is like flush with that edge. Oh, oh. and then hold up. I got to reset this camera. Yeah, it earlier it jammed, so I got to re redo it. Okay, let's get to see it again. So, again, you see, everything's normal, except for that straw. This one's a bit more finicky, so you shove it, hold it to the left. Oh, oh. Here it's, okay, now okay. But here's an example of one that's not like this. It looks in, but if you go like that, it's actually not. So you gotta, it's a bit finicky, but you're used to it. There you go, that's good. And then you gotta shove the battery pack in. Make sure it's a pretty strong battery pack or a charged one. These ones are pretty dead, so I wouldn't expect them to work. You need to get new 600 cartridges. And then, yeah, not enough power to push it through. But as you can see, that's how you use I type film for about four packs, and then you have to buy 600 film again. It's, it's cheaper, but. It ain't perfect. Yeah. Let's see. This is interesting. Yeah, with, with the tape, there's more resistance for, on the motor, so you need more powerful batteries. So about like <laughs> a five pack of film for one 
the ratio from 600 to eye type is 1 600 for 5 eye types. And that's it. Alright. I'm using these rollers because these are uh, thinner and as you can see, they roll much more easier than this, which is your thumb on the gear wheel. Oh yeah, if you do plan to tape or replace the rollers, if there's any bumps at all, you'll see them on, see it, see a pattern on your on the development paste when it ejects. You'll see lines or patterns or dots. Hopefully this one works. Uh, I just noticed that the the field of the timer on the camera ran out. Unfortunately, I got five minutes to shoot, or else before the camera app stops the recording, which is stupid. So yeah, it did reject. But uh, let me show you again. So, gonna make sure. Loading it again. Eh. Imagine doing this in the dark. It's tougher, but you could feel when it's in or not. Right like that. This is a good pack. Alright. And let me just move it to the center of the camera. Push it in and make sure this is flat. If this is not flush, it will get caught in the rollers and uh, jam, and you won't close the door. Won't be able to close the door, I mean. Hopefully, this works. Ta da! Now then, no flash. As you can hear, the and the motor's pretty weak because the battery's weak. These are some bad films. Yeah, oh yeah, here's the problem. Um, if you don't tape your rollers, the edges will look like this. If you, if you like the round type film, you could use that. That'll help prevent that. It won't prevent it, but it'll hide it. If you do tape it, you might, you'll get this corner developed, but this corner, uh, I haven't really found a way to fix it because if you look inside the roller, you see these. The top roller actually has these grooves, which I don't really know the main reason, but it seems like it rides along the borders of the frame. But I don't have tape thin enough to make it flush, and if last time I did that, it didn't end well. Like the film actually got less developed than last time. The bottom roller, though, it's um completely smooth so you could look in a service manager on how to remove this rollers and you could actually push this gear out and maybe lathe or maybe print i don't think printing 3d printing is smooth enough but make your own top roller and put on this gear or you know just make your entire different uh, bottom assembly yeah this camera is actually if you get the service manual pretty interesting because you could actually take the entire bottom off. And if you could reverse engineer that, you could probably 3D print or yeah, or resin print or somehow manufacture a new bottom that could work flawlessly with 600 film or maybe Instax. But Instax, since it's developed in the back, it's going to be um, mirrored, which is sad. I want cheaper film. So yeah, maybe in the future, if someone's crazy enough, with over these cameras, they could make an entire new bottom or a new door that could actually fit 600 film and develop it properly. All right, enough random. Let's keep on going. Yeah, look at all my dark slides. Oh, yep, man, that's an injection failure. Yeah, these dark slides, as you can see, are pretty, pretty ripped up. So. Yeah, all the packs of film I've shot. <laughs> uh, that's cost more than the camera now. Well then. At least you get, get to use a Spectra camera again. Oh yeah, there's also a, a last modification you could do, which is um, Frankenstein, a battery pack to it. There's two, there's like two ways to do it. The first way is to, um, <laughs> I don't have any thinner wire, so I have to use speaker wire. Just shave it down. So then you would just 
get these tie these around the tie these wires around the contacts. The left side is positive, the right side is negative. If you want a reminder, look at the battery and the multimeter. And then you just put a battery pack on the bottom, on the top, wherever you want. And uh, I recommend four nickel metal hydrate AA batteries because these vector cameras, someone tested them from like a, like a really obscure post on Reddit. They draw up to like four amps. So nickel metal hydride, they actually could provide quite a lot of current. If you use double A batteries, like Neton Aqualine batteries, yeah, they'll, they'll probably work. Yeah. Uh, if you look in the service manual again, the operating voltages for this is like 5.2 to 7 volts. But anything over 6.8 volts, I wouldn't recommend. I don't want, because unless you have a really broken spectral camera that won't, the shutter's broken or glass broken or whatever, maybe do like a voltage torture test and publish your results on Reddit, on r slash Polaroid or some YouTube video. Because their stores, like Pula Studio, they have a 600 slash I type to um, Spectra adapter. To me, it's overpriced. It's like a hundred dollars for like a piece of circuit board and a battery holder. But what it does is that, uh, let me compare it to the Spectra cartridge. As you can see, since the cartridge is smaller or thinner than the Spectra cartridge, you could fit some batteries on the side. So Polo Studio, they have a, they put some battery holders on the side for AAA batteries. And those are, they, those are special batteries. They are LIS, L-I-F-E-P-04, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's not lithium ion or other batteries. Those batteries are 3.2 volts, not 3.7 or anything above that, because three times, no, 3.7 times two, that's about 7.2 volts, which is quite high. And when you charge those batteries, they come out hot at four or 4.2 volts, which that's around eight volts and that's eight or 8.4 volts, which is pretty high. I've heard someone using a nine volt battery on these cameras, but I think that's safe because nine volt batteries, they have, they don't have that much current to them. So yeah. But if you do manage to get your hands, yeah, triple A LIFEP04 batteries, which are 3.2 volts, they are really hard to find. And then you need a special charger for them because you can't really use them a regular lithium ion charger that's dumb or sort of smart because they have different charging characteristics. Like, for example, lithium ion, 4 volts is charging voltage. LIFEP04, I don't even know. But... Yeah, you could do, do the Polo Studio way and find batteries that could fit on the side and then somehow wire it in there. And the next option is to take it apart, find cracks in the camera case where you could put wires out. Or if you really want, if you want to, you could drill holes into like the bottom, like here. You just got like the service manual to take this apart. It's pretty complicated. The tip is that you see that pin right there. That's the first thing you got to remove. You pull it out, and then you could, th this top half could like pull apart, and you get the top half, and you gotta do some other stuff to remove this mid plate plate off, and then some clips down here that you could move the bottom plate off. And then when you move the bottom plate off, you could actually find the power leads that are going to these contacts, and you could follow them to wherever, and then from there you could pick which place you want to uh, solder or tie in wires. To me, I think if someone has the resources to um, 3D print an adapter that could go to the side of 600 or 600 or I-type cart yeah, cartridges to the side that could um, accept special batteries or someone does testing on if lithium ion batteries when they're fully charged won't fry the Polar cam, especially these ones because this one's LCD and I guess more sensitive electronics. Yeah, hopefully, in the, fu the future is bright for Spectra. To be honest, I recommend you just go buy a 600 or a SX70 or a 
the, the newer cameras because all your all your images will have streaks. Uh, you, can, you can see it. They all have streaks. They have that corner missing, and in the end, after a few packs, it's not worth it. So I'm running out of time, but yeah.